This is our crazy event. One of the most stacked groups we've had throughout the entire season. Atlanta fans, your Florida champions. Salium, a huge clutch. Dallas Empire second home series win. Not one, not two, but three plays are going huge for Dallas Empire. There it is, Octane doing what Octane does. Rocker, clutch up once again. The Rocker are lighting it up. Hudson, show who's on top. Christine, stop it. They will be your Seattle Home Series champions. Florida, close it out. Farrow, he finds another one. Ultra have done it. First time getting out of group. The kill feed all purple. An absolute rampage from Decimate right now. Real fast. He fights two. No. That's ridiculous. It is time for CDL Game Day presented by Game Fuel. It is your home series final for the Minnesota event. Atlanta phase going up against the Florida Mutineers. And guys, this is interesting because yes, they have matched up previously, but Joe, I don't even know if we could use those previous matchups, whether it's been so long or the teams have changed. Mm -hmm. There's there's not a whole lot to go off for this. Yeah, I mean, uh, what they they've met already in a grand final. That it was that was at the Atlanta home series. That was a, a quick three zero, and that's when I, I think we were like, all right, Florida is the real deal. But they still had some work to do. They go into LA. That is when Pristini benches himself. Pharaoh comes on, but that was like a day or two before the event. And Faze was able to beat them once again. But we knew that was just going to be an off series for Florida due to due to the roster change. And since that point, what it's been three four months. So. Yeah, I, I mean, you have a brand new Florida roster. Our awakening looks fantastic, and they're in another grand final. So when you take a look well, at this, final. just thinking about the fact that they haven't taken a map off phase, right? But with it being so yeah. long ago, do you still give them a pretty good shot here to do this? I do. Uh, I mean, in that series that we just watched, we saw everybody contributing, right? Like Awakening played better than I thought he would against a team of Dallas's caliber. And you look at Skies also taking over. He started off that game for what, like 8-0, just absolutely dominating throughout the entire game, ended 28-12. and So they're on form right now. And then to top it all off, Havoc's having one of his best events as well. He had a 1.1 coming into today. So He's like their new X Factor now that Mox isn't on the team, and if Havoc's performing, I give them a good chance seeing how FaZe has been starting at a deficit in nearly every series. Well, last time they made a run and got the W, Havoc was the main guy I talked about. Yeah, the route man, the guy putting up, I think he was like number two overall for KD with SMGs. Like He was doing some really great stuff, but what I find kind of most interesting about this, and it's sort of crazy to think about, is coming in and knowing all the top teams were here, I guess for a lot of us, there was an assumption that probably FaZe, Empire, Huntsman would win it, and then we'd mm -hmm. finally sort of have a clear-cut number one team where there's been where it's been <laughs> a little bit of money and we've been going back and forth. Now, imagine if the Mutineers come in and win this, because now instead <laughs> of kind of having that clear team, now we have four teams with two wins. Uh, yeah. It gets even muddier at the top. Joe, I, I, don't, I don't know what we're going to think after this somehow Mutineers pull this off. Well, I, I think this is just one of the things, like... The Mutineers have been very inconsistent this year. They've gotten to a grand final. They're able to win it. Uh, and, and I just think people undervalue how tough it is to win in this league. And, and when you look at the fact that they're able to win it, you know, a home series, that you have to give them props. Like they, they have something to work Certainly. off of. They have a very solid core. And not only that, they got to another grand final. Like that is difficult to do. You put their bad weekends aside and. You have a very strong yeah, roster looks here, and, and, and they're showing it here once again. Well, let's first talk about how a phase got here, kind of their road to the final, because it wasn't as easy as maybe it has been the past for them. Uh, we, we were kind of laughing about how crazy it's been. Like, they haven't looked good at times. Like, they've started down 0-2. They've yeah. had to bring it back. They had to do it against Surge. They had to do it against Empire. They've looked incredibly vulnerable, maybe more vulnerable than they have all year. But I think what's scary, Ant, is even at what might be their worst, they're still a favorite in the final here. Yeah, it's just every single map up against the phase, it, it's just a challenge, right? Like every time a team goes up against them, whether they go up 2-0, it doesn't matter. It's always a huge challenge. Like they don't let it linger going into the next map. And 
you know, it's just early on in the series. They've lost the first hard point of every series so far. It's like, what if they start off strong? If they start off strong, it could be extremely troubling for the Mutineers. So, yeah, I think that this is a phase team that has a lot of tenacity, but they definitely look weaker to me over the last couple of days. <sighs> yeah, but still a favorite in a final. That's what's so crazy about it. Uh, for those of you maybe not familiar with this team or if you're new to CDL and COD Esports, let's take a deeper dive, a closer look into the Atlanta phase. Atlanta is the terrifying roster of Simp, Obizi, Selium, Priest, and Major Maniac. These guys are incredible to watch. It's the most fun I've had just watching a team dismantle and obliterate the competition in a long time. Atlanta have turned this game three completely around. One of the favorite things I heard from the start of the year with Scum saying when we play against FaZe, it's like there's six men on the map. They're that fast, they're that in your face. These guys are the most perfectly controlled chaos. Atlanta FaZe starting to rip their way across the map. For me, Simp is the best Call of Duty player that walks on this earth right now. And he's only really been competing for about a year and he's already kind of won it all. It's hard not to see Sim as the MVP. But for me, I want to give it to Major Mania because the glue that holds that entire roster together. He may not have the most engagements, but without that man on the map, that team don't win. Opens this one up real fast. He fights two. That's ridiculous work from FaZe. Any one of those five players at any moment in the game can turn it on and ruin your day. It's not just that they're skilled, they're better than everyone. They understand the game better than everyone too. It's almost comical. You're watching these guys and you're laughing and you're thinking, how do they do it? This could be another crazy game! You're absolutely flawless. They are a powerhouse team, and it's actually crazy to think about this now as we take a look through some of the stats for these guys, that there are only three teams that haven't had a sub come in or some kind of change. It's FaZe, Empire, and Legion. And FaZe also, like we know, uh, Joe, and we've touched on this a lot, but they were one of the first teams that came together for the CDL. We know they all want to play together desperately. And yeah, even if they're looking a little bit rough, these guys enjoy playing together. They find themselves in another final. Yeah, I think uh, for FaZe, they just have five really great players. And even if one's underperforming, another player will step up for them. Like throughout this yeah. tournament, we've, see, we've seen Priesta have bad games. Like this is probably one of his worst tournaments all year long, just being honest. And for him, it's fine because his teammates can step up for him. So like if he just starts to pick it up, like this team can become unstoppable once again, like they were early on in the season. But that's what a championship team is. Five players you can take over. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Florida Mutineers now on the other side of this matchup here in the home series final. I want to talk about Awakening because he has obviously stepped up, right? Like he has played better than maybe anybody expected. He's now going to be in this position where he is in his first final. Joe, how difficult is it maybe for a rookie to play in a final? I, I think it's difficult, but it, it seems like he really just doesn't care. Uh, I mean, they were in a <laughs> tough group. You know, they had to play Chicago right away in, in their first match. And to me, that that's the answer. I mean, you're talking about yeah. playing, you know, the, the mo one of the most prestigious players, uh, group of players ever. And, well, they went in that game five and it was like, all right, well, you know, we're, we're going to work. We're And you're going to these game fives. And he has responded. He has played well all weekend long and he's done it again on Sunday. So it's been impressive to watch but one of the key things that we talked about even with mox like we knew that he was one of their leaders probably alongside havoc and they've stepped up they've been on the same page their teamwork is still there and now that they've you know just sort of figured out their roles and responsibilities they're they're on point right now well it's interesting Ant, too because um I am a firm believer that a lot of these young players, uh, you know, you can say it's online, you can say whatever it, ever you want, but usually, usually once they get to land, they start to perform, even if it takes a couple yeah. events, but that's sort of been removed, right? Since since it's online, like, there's not that brief mm -hmm. transition period where maybe they struggle, they're able to get more comfortable, and is that maybe a part of at least why we're seeing more of an Im immediate impact from some of these young guys? Uh, absolutely. That is the biggest reason I think we're seeing an immediate impact from some of these guys is, you know, they're... They're used to playing online and going hard in scrims online and performing online because that's where 
those players dwell is in the online world. So when they get onto these pro teams with better players around them and better role players to assist them, they're gonna shine. So Awakening is obviously a player with a lot of pure talent. You can see that with him putting up these big numbers against some of the best players in the world. And he has players around him now where he can thrive and, and win games. And he's making his yeah. first debut in a final. It's not remotely to knock them at all. Like it's just, that's the climate yeah. we find ourselves in. It just seems like the transition's that much quicker, that much easier. They probably would have got to this form or been in this position eventually, but it just seems to be happening so fast uh, because that, that maybe that comfort level from, yeah, scrimming online, just playing online in these tournaments. But you saw the tweet there from the gorillas. Uh, they obviously got the brunt of what Awakening has been able to do. <laughs> But Joe, I just can't stop being impressed by wh whether it's Mac, whether it's Shotzi, whether it's Awakening, somebody gets it done. But now, Joe, let's quickly take a look at, uh, you know, the road to the finals, how they got here. Yeah, uh, I talked about it, right? They, they had to play Chicago right away. They're able to win, beat them in a game five. Then you go up against the Gorillas, who was impressive this weekend, went the distance with a lot of the top teams. They're able to beat them in four. And uh, we just saw them winning a game five. And, and it's just the way they're doing it as well. Like, the way they beat Dallas, 1-3-5. They're winning all three game modes. And when you talk about like, teams like Dallas and Atlanta, what makes them so scary is they don't really have a weakness. Not only are they strong and respawn, they also have ridiculous search and destroy rosters. And Florida just proved that they do as well. You saw Pharaoh step up, drop, what, 16, 17 kills in a game five. And and that's just what you need. When the, when the league is this close... You have to be able to excel in all three game modes, and that's why I think these two are in the final. Well, and for you, is there like a game mode that you think is maybe the most important for this final? Uh, hard point for sure. I mean, we just saw them ball out in hard point against Dallas. That's where FaZe has been weak, so I think they expose them in the hard point, and they're fine. All right, so we'll have eyes on the hard point, but players are just getting warmed up. We are almost ready for our home series final to kick off. It's the Florida Mutineers. It's the Atlanta phase. This should be one incredible final for a ludicrous week at all the game fives, all the round 11s. It has been insanity. We'll be right back after this quick break. The U.S. Army, what's your warrior? Tournament audio and team chat listenings are brought to you by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the Call of Duty League. Join the Astro family and pre-order the CDL A40TR headset and pro team speaker tags today at astrogaming.com. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew Game Fuel, the official energy drink of the Call of Duty League. Welcome back to CDL Game Day presented by Game Fuel. We are moments away from our home series final Mutineers phase. This weekend has been 
just insane. So many wild moments, and I'm hoping uh, we get more crazy ones here because most of the series Joe and I have casted have unfortunately been 3-0s or 3-1s, even though it's, what, 8 out of 12 series have now been 5-game series. So, Joe, I'm hoping... <laughs> For, for some magic, Joe. But before we get yeah. to the magic, uh, and we're going to talk game fuel keys to victory. We're going to start with FaZe. Talk me through your thoughts there. Yeah, the hard point needs to be better. Uh, they started every series down 0-1 in the hard point. Abizi and Priest are both at a .85 hard point KD. I think that it's something that has to improve in this series versus a team that we just witnessed greatness out of in hard points. So be looking for that to improve. All right, so that's your stuff for FaZe. How about your keys to victory for the Mutineers? Uh, awakening to handle the pressure. We were talking a little bit about it when we were watching the last series. We're like, this is going to be his first grand final and his debut on his new team. Will he be able to handle that pressure? So far, so good. But this is a new beast he's going up against with a lot of people watching. It could be very tough. So we'll see if he can handle it. Yeah, so Joe, it. I just want you to touch on that. Like, I know it's online. I know we touched on the level of comfort that you have because mm -hmm. the similarity between maybe scrims and this. But it's still a final, right? It's still a different beast. Do you feel there's a lot more pressure on him here? I, I mean, there is like the, the the pressure to perform, but even like coming into this weekend, I, I would say even if they lose this, like they've done a great job. Not a yep. lot of people expected yeah. them to get to the final. They're able to beat Chicago. They're able to beat Dallas, two of the top three teams in the world. This is just another one of them. So it feels like while there should be some pressure, him and his team are handling it very, very well. So uh, yeah, but it, it's still there. Absolutely. Like you're load, loading up into your first final. So it's something a little bit different. It's definitely in the back of his mind, but everything to this point, he's done great. Dude, imagine this. And I don't even know what to compare it to. Imagine if you're awakening first time in a pro team, first time at an event like this, and you beat the top three. You beat Huntsman, you yeah, beat Faze, <laughs> you beat Empire to get the win. Like, are you yeah, kidding you me? Win. You beat all <laughs> you of them. You go through everybody. But now look at it, the quick scope presented by US Air Force. Uh, we can see all the records. I just, as we mentioned previously, I don't know how much it matters to me yeah. because how much things have changed for Mutineers. Like, as we touched on with Faze, like this has been the same unit from day one. So you can put a lot of stock in those numbers. But for Mutineers, this is brand new. There have been changes all over the place, and uh, I just, I don't know what to expect. I mean, all we can really take is what, what they've done this weekend. Yeah, and they've been incredible. I mean, for the Mutineers, they've been one of the organizations that have made, like, the best moves throughout the season. They've adapted throughout the season with challenges of players sitting out and having to replace players. And I thought they've done a great job so far. So, um, so far, so good for them. And, you know, going into this series, I would be worried about that game three. FaZe has been doing well in the second half of the series on St. Petrograd specifically in any mode. So that game three could be a tough one. Well, that'll be your maps and modes presented by U.S. Air Force. Uh, Joe, you heard Ant's thoughts. Anything that really stands out to you as far as the maps and modes go? Uh, yeah, I mean, game one is really important. It's Gunrunner. Hey, we just saw FaZe lose that game one in the semifinal. We saw in the, the final versus Dallas. We saw them lose that game one. It seems to be their go-to pick, but uh, it's one they've been losing early on, right? And uh, yeah, I think Ant nailed it. I, I actually messed up Florida 1-1-4-5 last series. It was the Chicago series where they won that domination they've been so stellar at. But yeah, the hard points have to be on point because Florida has, their hard points have been fantastic this weekend. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know if, it's like I want to say FaZe can't start slow like they have most this weekend because it's a final, because how the Mutineers are playing, but I don't know if there's <laughs> any point can you can count them out. Yeah, like if yeah, they're down 0-2, like, who cares? I, I, and I think Ant brought it up where Petro, what is one of the Petros that stands out to you? It's Florida versus Minnesota in, in the final on Petro, but I will say that Atlanta 7-1 on that Petro domination. We'll take a look now at the phase lineup. Uh, yeah, stacked. I mean, we saw the we saw the profile video. The tiny tears really across the board, just filled with youth and ability. They are unbelievable. But now let's take a look at the Florida Mutineers. This will be the Florida Mutineers lineup. It has been changing all over the place. Uh, I think there was a question at times, like, where is that leadership going to come from with this particular team? Uh, but it, it's working out, right? I think it was Synth that said, uh, you know, as long as you have like-minded individuals on the squad that all want to get better, that all want to win, he doesn't well, know how much, like, in-game leadership is that big of a deal. But whoever's handling it for the Mutineers side seems to be working. Well, it's also they they built it though, right? Like with Mox, they've built a system. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and to this point, 
all Awakening had to do was fill into that system. So, while I will say, yes, I agree with him that you do need five players, this system was already built. And yes, they're going to sure. have to make some adjustments for a new player, but they know what they've had to do. Again, they've already won a home series. Well, from what I understand, the game is loading up. It is the home series final for the Minnesota Rocker event, Phase vs. Mutineers. Joe, we're going to have a lovely time casting this and hoping for a very extended series. Give me some wildness, wackiness, and everything in between. But Nameless, thank you for joining us and breaking it down. Appreciate you, bud. Enjoy, guys. We will. I'm, I'm going to enjoy the hell out of this. Joe, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm very ready. I've got my face in the mic, Joe. I'm so excited. I mean, do you want me to get close and personal <laughs> like this? Oh, God, I, I just, I want, I want a wild one. You and, you and I missed all the crazy series. We're owed one. We are owed a crazy home series final. And I, I just, I don't know what to expect, man. I don't know what to expect, but this is a good map for both teams. As you can see at the bottom of your screen, FaZe, six and three, Mutineers, four and two. They have both been solid here. Who can be better and take this game one? Because Nameless said the hard points are huge. You said map one is huge. A lot of pressure yeah, on this one to get going. Yeah, the, the, those three losses, again, are in map one in, in pretty critical series. We just saw it with Gorillas. We saw in the final a few home series ago. And one of the big things that we saw earlier today was really around that second hill, the depot. I think Gorillas out-rotated them every single time. We'll see if they make some adjustments. And BZ right off the start trying to make those rotations. And there you go. There's the adjustment he makes the play. There is the play. And yeah, you nailed it. I think I saw a bunch of people on Twitter vocally is kind of blasting face about their rotations and how yep. they never seem to rotate. They just seem to have the gun skill to break in and get it done. I don't know if it's going to work here against how good the Mutineers have looked. So, yes, have to keep an eye on that discipline. And so good, so far, so good. They've got the right side of the map covered. That's a, it's a big flip early on. Not a lot of time earned here. I think I heard Chance talk about it. Like, the average is, like, 14 points, which is the lowest that, that we typically see. Awakening trying to work the flank, but Priest is going to shut him down, sell him as well. So with 12 seconds left, it feels like FaZe have, have done their job. They got that flank, but can Frosty make the play for the Mutineers? A quick answer is no. Is no. Priest <laughs> will shut him down? Now we will switch hard points. And inside we go. How much time can FaZe now turn this into? The swarm coming in for Mutineers as they look for a break. Abiz, he tucked away in a pocket. They're able to take down one. The snap out front puts damage into a second as he tries to find the angle through the smoke. Sky's found an opening to get through. Two players from FaZe now spawning out. Mutineers are pushed right through the front. They've gotten to the back. That break is just simply too easy. Major Maniac really the last one here. If you're FaZe, you still have the parallel spawn, but... That just happened way too fast. So I guess it doesn't matter. If phase rotate first, they rotate second, they look for breaks, and hard point they're finding some struggles. Yeah, that's where you just have to execute, right? That first set of kills has to come through. I think we saw eight kills in a row before phase shut some players down. It was three streaks on the mutineer side. A big break, and now working up to a 40 point lead as we rotate over towards minecart face have another opportunity but frosty and awakening able to get some early kills that will turn into some early pressure as sky's trying to do what he can trying to stay alive able to take out Priest with the pistol it looks like Selium was trying to go on a pinch and there is four dead once again and and this is what we saw like this literally reminds me uh, of when Atlanta did play Dallas in the grand final because they were rotating, but it was the first set of kills that were just not coming in for Atlanta face. It literally seems like they're more comfortable when they have to break sometimes. Like, yeah. I, I don't know that I can think of that ever being a thing really in Call of Duty. Like you always want the early rotation pretty much. You always want to be set up first, but sometimes it just seems like face is better when they're trying to break. And I, I know that doesn't make sense. I get that, but I don't know. It's like if they get antsy when they're set up early, they just need to keep flying. But great job from Mutineers so far. Up 50. They bust through into another hard point. As we'll get ready for our next rotation over to Card. Set up early is going to be Skies, ready to do damage. He's got Havoc looking over him as well. As they're in a position to now have the early setup. Now let's see what they can do with it. Will FaZe be more comfortable on the break and maybe find some early success into the point? At least right away, Havoc says no, sir. That's a double from Havoc. And what a start it's been from Pharaoh. 12 and 7 out the gate from him. And they talked about it, in, you know, in the, in the pregame. Priest has had some very slow starts this tournament. 4 and 11 right now, and a guy who we know can just be so consistent. We'll have to watch his stat line, see if he can turn things around. We know he is such a pivotal piece for this team. 
phase. They're getting set up for the spawns on the left side of the map for warehouse when we rotate there. And they just do not want Florida to earn a lot of time. But Florida's going to fight for it. They get three kills. Major Maniac gets his turn with that MP5, but the trade is there. And I guess right now for FaZe, you're just trying to fight over mid-map control. Just keep them spawning deep on the right side of that map. Yeah, Priest, uh, what, triple negative, as you said. I mean, just for his career, there's just not many times he's had events like this. I mean, I, I can think of that time he was really sick at an event where he, he was struggling, yeah. but he was he was literally ill. Assuming he's feeling all right, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but it has not been a great event for him. And I think they're going to need him to find form to get this win. Granted, with the talent amongst the four of their players, they can probably still do it, but triple negative simply not going to be good enough. But now FaZe, the chance to get right back into this and really tie up the game if they can lock it down here inside of the warehouse. Simp is set up in the back. The push still coming through. They still have one phase member and priest over by minecarts that should be able to flank on in. The pinch there, though, for mutineers. Can they come out on top? And again, they do it. They I, I fly think you take through. They though. get the final 20 or so seconds. Yeah, I think you take this because you see that, well, what's next for FaZe is they're going to set up for first and second hill. You do have one player over there. That's awakening, but that's going to be a, a quick trade. So you take the 30 seconds. You split most of this hill time if you're FaZe, but you sell, set yourself up for one and two if they can hold it because last time through, could they hold it? The answer was no. But do watch the tip of the minimap or the top of the minimap. It's once again awakening who's trying to make the play for Florida. As skies and Havoc go big on the hill. Yeah, and he almost spawns up behind him. He's all the way to the backside of tracks. He just flanks the whole way around. Keep an eye on the minimap now for the spawns. As people continue to die with Awakening in that position, is it the difference? Awakening actually ends up taking down two. He just needs And now trying to finesse yeah. his life so badly, but nobody else there in a position to do it, so he'll do it all himself. Three drop, but he doesn't get the spawns. If anything, though, his position alleviates any and all pressure from the hard point from phase. Yeah, you start to earn some good time. But Florida's just been able to earn that. Now they have a, a round of 50 point lead. They were able to flip that gear. So they're going to get this set up now. And we're going to ask ourselves a question. Can FaZe hold it with having the close spawns? 10 seconds left. You're going to earn that scrap time. Awakening. Trying to go all the way around. That's going to be that first gunfight. And I think off that, they're going to try to fly. Can FaZe hold this time where Mutineers get another wondrous break? Abiz, he's going to get ripped off the back after he takes down two. Selium tucked away inside. He's just going to close the door for now. On the top side of it, they've won. Now you have to focus on the bottom side. A team kill does come in. His guys will take out Havoc with the Simtex. There's one more player in the back. It's actually Frosty who takes out two players. You still held for now if you're phase, but now the number's simply too much for Mutineers. With 30 seconds remaining, they get in. I mean, it's a longer hold for phase, but eventually the result's still the same. Yeah, it just feels like that. Well, I was going to say all the kills aren't coming at once for phase, and then they do it. They get four. Dead Priest is able to find two. They're going to earn these 15 seconds, which are going to put them in reach of, of, of 30 for the lead. Priest has turned it around big time. I, mean, I know he's only 13 and 20, but he was 4 and 12 at one point, so it's improved. Simp leading the way on one side. Pharaoh still leading the way from Mutineers. But out of mine cards, Frosty to the one inside the hardpoint soaking up the time. Priest is doing his best to make the play outside of Vent Room. Over to Awakenings POV we go. His first ever home series final as he continues to try and make a name for himself. What a talent he has been so far this weekend. Closer and closer, the Mutineers get to that 200 point mark and start to run away with this game. The Frosty just playing peekaboo and the cart comes up with the knife, is able to get the kill. And teams have gotten much better at holding minecart, and it's really around that pipe's position. You see where Pharaoh goes. He's all the way in water, just basically putting for or sorry, putting Atlanta in a spawn trap himself. But that was uh it's gonna be a 50 50 second hold. Which puts them 50 points away from winning map one. It looks like FaZe's hardpoint woes continue this weekend at risk of losing another map one. We'll see if Mutineers can close it out. I mean, they've got spawns for next. They've got position by the hardpoint. As quick as I say that, it is gone as FaZe will now get set up inside with a flurry of kills. The Mutineers right back at it. Somehow, if you're FaZe, you have to hold this off. 
think about a flip, but they're down nearly a hundred, and you just don't see comebacks like this really ever on this title. <laughs> no, you do not. And especially this map, right? You just have to do so many things that... Well, basically two parts of the map, and that just comes down to winning so many gunfights, winning gunfights at disadvantages. Selling him on a three spree, kind of turning things around. He has a slow map, one Priest, uh, BZ. Really, like, the, the big three that we talk about, right? Like, Selling and Priest, BZ, those guys who put so much pressure on the map, really having a slow game one. The simp, well, just does what simp does best. Puts up 30, but he needs some help. He certainly does. Now you've got to be flawless if somehow you can do it, but Frosty is still lurking towards mid, just there to put the pressure in the flank as soon as FaZe up, try to get through to the hard point. Awakening continuing to go big. What a first map it is in his home series final debut. 29 and 22. And there's the final seconds. Mutineers get the convincing, convincing game one win. That might as well be a 100-point club in this title because that is a blowout. Mutineers, they run it from the get-go. And yeah, phases map one woes just continue. I don't know what it's it really is, gun but these runner. guys can't hey, get it going. Gun runner. It, it's this map. It, yeah. it feels like when they're in a bit of a slump, this is just not their map. And we touched on it. What? There was th about three hills where they had early setups and they're n just not executing. When you're not executing, what's going to happen? Your slaying's not going to be there. You know, things get out of rhythm and the pressure gets on you. But Florida, dominant in that map one. I, I just, how does it happen? Like, how's it happen for a team like FaZe that we know has all the talent, they have good coaching, they have hungry players? How do you just, I don't know, seemingly forget how to play at times? Well, Hardpoint is a lot of, like, small things, right? And uh, sometimes you, you sort of get away from those things. And I think that's what especially is happening here, right? Like, all right, how do we want to hold this? What What is our strategy when we hold this second hill and it seems like maybe they just aren't on the same page right now well we're going to take a look now joe at the fan selection bracket and uh, <laughs> i believe it was uh four to five thousand people vote on who they thought was going to take it and as you can imagine it's what uh you have huntsman empire phase like at the top there were only 0.8 percent of people that picked mutineers to potentially take this so if you talk about shutting up the haters proving people wrong whatever it is uh i mean there were more people that picked ultra to win the event than mutineers so i don't even know how that's technically possible but well, it's just recent form right it's recency bias right you, again just had they, they've been playing pretty poor uh the last time we saw florida um that's true. where toronto got true. to a semi-final so uh, it's, it's just recency bias and again they've been to a grand final they, they they've won a home series final uh it's just uh people seem to forget very quickly Hey, well, yeah, it's just the inconsistencies, though, as you touched on. Like, it seems like finals are bust at times for Mutineers, yeah. which is which is wild when uh, most of the other top teams, well, when I say most of the other top teams, like Empire and FaZe have been pretty consistent. Huntsman nearly falls into that category as well with Mutineers just being all over the place uh, with some of the results, uh, at least as of late. But uh, this is going to be it's gonna be a wild one. It seems like FaZe are going to have to dig deep and somehow come up huge. I think it was Simp in the interview who kind of said, yeah, we're not playing great. But maps a lot of times come down to a couple of crucial moments. And you and I as commentators try our best to kind of point those out, whether it's in a search, mm -hmm. hardpoint, dom. Like, it feels like commentating at times is like several minutes of like fluff. And then a couple moments you need to nail where stuff really shifts or there's a really, really good big play. And that's kind of what Sim touched on. Like, there's just these swing moments, these clutch moments where if you go big, you win the map. And I, I completely agree with him. Even though it's like a 10 minute game, it comes yeah. down to sometimes 60 to 90 seconds of moments. Yeah, it comes down to a, you know, a break here, a break there. And that's really what we saw, isn't it? When Florida was set up, they, they had big holds. That second hill twice at depot, they were able to break through. That, to me, is two major moments uh, that we saw in that gun runner. And that seems to be the trend. So maybe FaZe just has to go back, look at their gun runners, especially today, watch that second hill and figure out what they need to fix. Certainly. Uh, but again, why they're so tough to beat, why they're tough to put away is the fact that they don't have... Well, historically, a huge weakness in any moment. I know Hardpoint hasn't looked great for them, but when they've needed to bounce back and win the map where they have, right? Uh, they, they played it at least 50%, and that's the reason they find themselves in a final. But now to search and destroy, not going to be an easy task here for Mutineers either. But I think two strong search teams that are filled with kind of strong search players all over the place, whether you talk about a, a Pharaoh, a, a Havoc, a, a Simp, a Selium, like you've got strong search players on either end of this. I, I think when you and I were watching earlier, 
and you kind of heard Miles and Momo touch on it too, is those early engagements that Abizi has. We've talked about it so frequently. It reminds you of Zuma at times. Like he, he's going to be the first to fight so often. How, how big is it for him to find some success early in these rounds? Yeah, I, I think for Abizi, when we've watched them, like he's the first guy in. He's the entry guy, it's right? Hard. Like, it's hard. Yeah, he, he's got to execute. And, and you're just hoping that someone who's playing entry can win around like 50% of their fights, right? Like go like eight and eight. Uh, and one of the interesting things coming into this is map one, that was Atlanta's map pick. That that was their their hard point was the gun runner. We're going to map two. And what's interesting about Arklov Peak, Florida is two and five. Atlanta is seven and two. They've found a lot of success. So you have to be feeling pretty good if you're Atlanta. But the question is for Florida, okay, you know that they're this strong on it. So they've had to have done a lot of prep work. That That's the only thing to me where this... All right, we know what Atlanta does. Well, that's weird because I would assume with the of that it would be their pick for game two. So that that is interesting considering how good they've yeah. been in it. All right, well that, that that's interesting if that's how it went down. Yeah, the game vetoes. five is Gunrunner search, and that's five and one overall for Atlanta. Again, they're not going to have many bat, bad map records. That's true. But this Arklov uh, peak, like map number two choice to me, just seems like Florida has their preparation done. Hey Joe, uh, as you know, I love you. I think uh -huh. you're a, I think you're an incredible man and you are my heart okay. carry but t tomorrow is a very special day and that's because tomorrow is Joe's birthday. Joe how how old do you turn bud? Uh 27 man. Oh. I'm getting up to Maven age. Yeah. yeah. I'm still like a decade older than you, man. I'm 35. I'm still, I'm in a different generation, Listen, basically, it, it, at this point. It, it, Call of Duty age, that is like ancient. It's ancient. <laughs> hey, you're still as talented as you were when you were competing, buddy. You, you, you carry me every day, but a very early happy birthday to you. We love you, Joe. Thank you. You're a beast. I appreciate it. But I believe we're just having a quick delay before we hop into the map, too. We're almost ready to go. Uh, we're headed to a quick break. We'll be right back. Thousands and thousands of hours of hard work lead to this moment. 
The Mutineers will go in with a small lead. The Mutineers will have the advantage. Now they're on your point. Look how close it is, Joe! A millimeter! What a round! What a round! Hello! We missed you terribly! It is time to get back into the home series final. Search and Destroy about to kick off as the Mutineers were able to take map one. I am Maven, and I'm with the birthday boy, Joe Merck DeLuca. It's tomorrow. Not today. I, I, I'm pretending it's today. Can I get all okay. happy birthdays in the chat? Happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, Mo, uh, Merck. Happy birthday, Big Papa. Any, <laughs> Are you about to say Mo? Were you about to say? I think I, I, think I almost did say your wife's name. Yes. But, <laughs> yes. Okay. No, we're all excited for you. Now I'm pretending. It, Joe, I didn't, I didn't get you a gift, but I'll take five gifts tomorrow. All good. We'll do that. <laughs> five gifts to tomorrow. Okay. I like that. Run it, we're running it up tomorrow. But all right, let's get into Dark Claw Peak. As you stated, it is a lights out map for the most part. Four phase. Well, I think it's one too. Like, if you're Florida, it's one that's gone the distance. I, I remember multiple round 11s for phase. The seven and two could easily be like a five and four. Um, so it's definitely one they've shown weakness. But yes, they have a lot of repetitions on it. And if it's gone deep, you think a lot of, yeah, a lot of footage to watch, too, to try and figure out how you want to play this. But it's offense for Mutineers, and it's Pharaoh with the snipe. Oh, uh, God, I remember it. in his career, he has hit some absolute doozies. We'll see what he can do. And on the other side, Simp, if he opts to pull it out, not a bad sniper himself. Over Havoc as he works his way up ditch. They try to find an opening on the off-site to that number seven mid-map. That's going to be Skies trying to keep them honest. And I think it's a BZ that's starting to work the flank. It's a while till he's going to get there, but perhaps he found an opening. If this Mutineer pushes slow, if it takes a while and it just got slowed down because of Priesta, a BZ should be in a position shortly to put this to bed. Yeah, it's already been pretty slow. They threw two smokes to try to bait out some nades, and they did just that. But what does that do? That buys time, as you said, for a BZ. He took the wide flank. He went all the way through back church so that I, I think it was they had one player middle of the map but doesn't hear him as he goes through the flank. Atlanta face. They start off with a bit of a 4-1 split towards the B site. They rotate over when the smokes go down. They make sure they don't get the plant. A BZ goes on the flank. He's able to find a multi-kill. Yeah, I think it maybe you win at the front. Then you're able to kind of have somebody focus the flank and worry about it. But as soon as the first blood went to phase, suddenly all the focus has to be at the bomb well, site. And and it's early, wide open for a BZ. Early round one on the flank, you expect your player mid-map to, to basically hear the player, right? You don't have dead silence early in round one. So I think they're just playing. All right, I didn't hear anything. So we don't expect him to go all the way through. Smoke out four phase as they start to work their way forward towards the site. Havoc lurking up close here past the mound. I mean, he's basically in a position to play a massive disruption he's stuck to though. this phase push. But now that he's been spotted, Simp is going to hit the snipe. The nades are going to connect onto Havoc, and very quickly, you've got two down for Mutineers. Yeah, it was just stuck in that spot. You're hoping for an early first blood. Smokes go down. Skies does find a BZ. There's one player lurking. Awakening. Awakening got into a great position. He was able to lurk. He finds one, but Selium is there for the tray to give them the man advantage. And this time, it's Major Maniac on a late flank. He finds the opening in the defense. Yeah, now these a 3v1 flanks. for Skies. <laughs> Whether offense or defense, they're being very, very painful. Just three kills. We'll see if Skies can work the clutch, but nope. The only thing that's <laughs> working is a snipe bullet to his chest. We'll see it now from Simp. Bit of a flick. Now, that was a little bit lower than the chest. That might have been more painful than I thought it was, Joe. I think Skies is just hoping to get out the window, <laughs> but I think he hits the ledge. Uh, it doesn't matter. Tough position for Skies. Awakening almost made the play. Selling him with a big trade gives them the advantage. I'll see if they change anything up on offense. You gotta imagine if they're going A, they're gonna be a little bit more conscious of the flank this time, but screw A. They're gonna do it up mid-map. Now if they go, but a BZ. Job He's done. there to get the first blood, and 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's his job, right? Get that first engagement. Now, they ready for Priest in the corner. They sure as hell are. Priest is going to get shut down. Simp now relocating to kind of watch that cross towards the B house. Working maybe on a late flank as well as Major Maniac. He's got a ton of information he, that nobody is near he A. He does this a ton, right? He plays the trench, and I think Skies knows this. Look at Skies ready for it. I think he was watching the cross to his spawn. He's just patiently waiting as Abizi's up top, and you see this inside. Major Maniac is going to get taken down by Pharaoh. So you have the man advantage. Three versus four. Who's going to be the first to go? It looks like it's going to be Selium side window. Things start to fall apart because the BC's going nuts. Almost three inside and four in the round. Now it's all disguise. Who is across? Major Maniac got his position early in the round. He takes a stun to the forehead. So I believe a flash just right in through that top window. They got to hit the defuse, though. He just has to hit one shot. He Sip can't hit the snipe. He can't he find can't him. He hit can't hit the snipe, but he defuse. can't get the shots in. Oh. And they'll just get it diffused. I, I mean, Simp, I know he doesn't hit the shot. Maybe he's just a big enough of a distraction to make well, Sky's shot a closed. little bit shaky. The one just side door was it. closed for the diffuse. I don't think you could find him. If that door's open, it's an easy kill. Yeah, it must be all it was. He just couldn't get on him. Couldn't track him for the wall bang. Sky just needed to hit his shots on one player. Just not able to do it. And it's 3-0 now for FaZe. They'll go right back towards this A site. The utility out. As they want to soar. And Havoc just playing a bit of an off angle close as we look See what Simp can find with the Sniper. Major Maniac once again going to be playing towards that offsite. As Frosty, I believe, is working up towards that house. We might have a gunfight on this side of the map here momentarily. We'll see if Frosty gets through. His dead silence is about to run out. And he's going to have to slow down. But he may have found the position. But look at the rotation. The rotation's coming through. But Frosty's going to spot it. Frosty position is going to spot that. Now just trying to play his life. Doesn't think he has bombed down. Awakening is going to find a BZ who is on alert. Frosty stays alive, finds his second kill. But the most important one was the first one. That yeah. was the bomb carrier. He was able to catch the rotation. Well, he almost gets gifted, right? Like, he tries to get that dead silence probably to get to the flank, but it runs out, as you said. Now he has to slow it down, and it ends up being perfect for the Wrath back, right? Like, he's got a perfect line of sight on bomb carrier. Everything gets shut down there. Hell of a play from Frosty. Major Maniac, I don't think, had any idea he was in that position. And you're sort of, your phase, you're relying on him from that spot to say, hey, it's all clear, go ahead and rotate. Frosty plays spoiler. A much need around now for Mutineers. Finally, something up on the scoreboard. Major Maniac. <laughs> Gets that first blood, and, well, Again, maybe a little yeah. bit of revenge from last round. We'll take out Frosty. Yeah, it's a 4-1 advantage now. First bloods for the Atlanta phase, and that could reflect the score here soon. What do you want to do if you're Florida? 30 seconds off the clock. You're down a man trying to find an opening. A BZ isn't giving you that opening. Maybe you go for a dead silence play. Pharaoh's going to pick up the bomb. Major Maniac, though, finds the opening. Now it's down to Awakening and Pharaoh. Can they clutch up in the two versus five? Uh, 2v4, thanks to Pharaoh's pick. There's another one. 2v3 now, 30 seconds to go. Pharaoh's picking him apart. Oh, it is close, Simp. Might feel that bullet whiz past his shoulder. He's going to gun Major Maniac. Now it's a two versus two. 20 seconds to go. Is this happening? What was a 2v5 for Awakening and Pharaoh? Though. Now a chance to do it, but Selium may have just shut it down. Bomb is going to get picked up. He tries to track back for the plant and Simp hits the shot, but they made it interesting in a round that looked well, unwinnable. Pharaoh made it interesting, yeah. <laughs> right? And I think you were talking about it. He, he's got some swagger, to, especially to his snipe game at times. Uh, he just... Plays a little bit aggressive with it. We saw it a lot in Call of Duty World War II. He hits that shot on the simp. the guy just sort of does what he wants. He hits the shot on the simp and then guns Major Maniac. I mean, who knows how that round goes. 
Yeah, I think swagger is the right word there for sure. Six and five now from Pharaoh. But unfortunately, they're in a 1 4 hole. Priesta again, though, man. Like, I mean, you're up 4 1. Who cares? But something just seems a little bit off this weekend. But it's Simp with the snap yet again. And a BZ with the bunny hop across mid. Back in. Havoc put to bed. A BZ is a sicko. It's just, I think that pull messes with that second player that he's able to bunny hop behind. A couple of those bullets go through that. Allows him to win the second. The hit marker, he's still alive. He's getting the plant down. Will the nade connect and stop it? No, Priest is going to get it down. Have the man advantage again. Well, a, a large man advantage as Pharaoh is the last one left. He got this, Pharaoh. No problem. You're dead. Nice try. But 5-1 now, four phase, and a BZ, man. That's just, whew. Yeah, you can credit the poll. You can cr credit whatever you want. But a nice little bunny hop. Great movement from a BZ. And, man, that, that round gets ended by that great play from him. I'm just quickly going to take a look at the, the vetoes just to, just to see what searches they, they went again. So it looks like Petro and Ramaza. So... Yeah, maybe they didn't want to play them on Piccadilly either. But I said, just yeah, been such not, a strong Yeah, there's not map. an easy choice. There's not an easy choice. Yeah. So, yeah. It just comes down to what their practice with Awakening as well. True. True. Now one round away from tying up this grand final, and Joey won't have a 3-0, which I, I, I'm in love with that concept. Well, we've had a few 3 I think we have, what, 1-3-1? One, 1-3-1 three, one? One, three, one and 2-3-0s, yeah, it's been... Yeah. Well, we are we are, we are are three of the four games that weren't five-game series. <laughs> oh, but now, <laughs> now we got a chance for an extended one. The first blood does come in for Mutineers. Awakening tacks on another one to that. As they try to stay alive in this game, too, see if they can somehow pull off a crazy comeback. But so far, it's been clinical from FaZe and a BZ again. Two more as his position inside of the B house pays off. That's yeah, just, you, you gotta check a corner, right? And which corner is it this time? He's behind the bomb. Florida still in it, but a BZ goes on the flank. He has dead silence. 12 and 4 from a BZ. He's able to stay alive, dodging so many bullets, and Selium has his back. Now it's all down to skies. And. Yeah, he's going to shoot the TV antenna because this one is over. Well, Joe, you know how I asked you how important would a BZ be to this game, too? It looks like it was very <laughs> important. As, uh, it wasn't even necessarily the first Bloods, which I know he had a couple, but more in the mid game when he was finding those multi-kills. He is just an absolute tank of a player, a BZ, dominating in the game, too. And that'll tie us up at 1-1, one 13-4 one, out of a BZ. But, all right, you get the 6-1 win. But are you still concerned in the long run of this series of over all five games? You get a one and seven out of Priest. Like, clearly something is off. Well, I, maybe, right? You, you talk about a BZ struggles. And what is the easy switch? Like, P Priesta has played that entry role before. I mean, he just did it last year with 100 Thieves. So, you know, maybe he's like, I have to slow down a little bit. Priesta, you sort of take that spot. We can work bombs some more. Maybe it's just Priesta who ends up in that position at times. Right? Okay. It's just a, it is a tough spot, especially in our clock. We just saw it, right? You have to either run through a door or you have to try to plant a bomb well, without he, getting needed by three people. Yes, but tough spot or not. I mean, he's just not having a great weekend. He, he just hasn't yeah, not having a great his, weekend. Yeah, a lot not, of Verdansk. And yep. I just, <laughs> uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if he can turn it around, but it's not going to matter. And that 6-1 victory tied up 1-1. The home series final here for the Minnesota Rocker event. It is a battle. And we'll be right back after this quick break.
Sheffield GT League is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Rule your day with the number one brand in prepaid. Scuff Gaming, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. During the Minnesota Rocker Home Series this weekend, we will be raising money to stop police brutality and help rebuilding efforts in Minnesota. Our players have chosen to wear this message on their jerseys. Hashtag justice for George Floyd. The Call of Duty League stands firmly against racism, inequality, and injustice. Let's make change together. Activision Blizzard has made a donation and set a goal of raising over $4 million to help provide transformative opportunities to black Americans to eliminate systemic racism and discrimination. Go to callofdutyleague.com slash impact for organizations recommended by our teams and links with information on how to get involved. There's a lot going on in the world right now, Joe, and uh, I'm hoping people watching, if you if you have the extra money to do so, please donate to some of these great causes that are going on right now around the world. Uh, do what you can. But Joe, this finals just got a lot more interesting. We're now tied up at 1-1. We're ready to get into a domination. And I'm just happy that we don't have a 3-0. Yeah, and this one is probably the the most interesting, right? You have uh, okay. you know Atlanta, who's at four and one. Florida is seven and one overall. Uh, the only loss that Florida has on this map, by the way, is to Atlanta. So, but but a, a very strong map for for both teams. All right. Well, before that, let's take a look at the U.S. Army tactical play, and it is going to be Simp hitting snipes, making plays. It was a beezy with the bunny hop through that round to get it done. But that dynamic duo, the tiny tears. Both hitting shots to get the round win, and honestly, it wasn't it wasn't really close there. I know it's sort of a pick your poison type thing for yeah. search and destroy when you're trying to do the veto process against them or against Phase, but it is tough to. You talked about having awakening added and the changes that have gone down for the roster uh, with Pharaoh coming in, still relatively recent. Recent uh, awakening just hopping in. It can't be easy to know your strengths and weaknesses in a mode that you don't get a ton of time on. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm just like, it's one of those things that you have to look at, right? Is the veto process. And I and I feel like Piccadilly has been one where we have seen some some struggles for phase, but maybe you haven't put much time into it, like I said. And as we said, looking at this, 7-1 and one for Florida, 4-1 and one for Atlanta. The one loss, though, for Florida is to the Atlanta phase. So this should be a, a good one. Yeah, uh, some of the most impressive results, crazy spawn traps, and just wild stuff we've seen in this map has been from these two teams. And I feel like teams have gotten better at it, right? Just recently, it just feels like they've really started to, started to figure it out. Yeah, I, just, I don't know if it's from a spawn standpoint. It just seems so chaotic at first. People have been getting a little bit better at manipulating it or playing to their strengths for sure. This time, it's not Frosty with the knife, but it's Stellium the butcher that's able to make the play at B. Sip still trying to finesse around restaurant, but the B cap is in early for Mutineers. So right now, if you're phase, you've only got A. What's the game plan here? What's your plan of attack, Joe? Well, you got to try to get inside Hazmat, and I think that's what Priest was trying to do up top in that window and just cut off the angles, make it tough as you try to capture B. And then and when you have an A, B set up, we saw Dallas do it a, a couple of times this weekend where you, you try to flip C. You would love to have that C fly. That's where you can really set up that three cap. But we'll see what Atlanta wants to do. Selium's going to be the guy I was talking about trying to attack their home flag. Simp picking up the pinch, and this could be a, a massive play here, but Skies is on top of it. Well, they're working desperately to try and get this flip. I'd love to hear what the comms sound like as they work for it. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listening with Atlanta Phase. Find it, he's got B. He's in the back. Trophy B, Trophy B. Look up, one's on B, one's on B! Playing down! On B, watch out, absolute, absolute nice, on B! Nice, good shit. I spawned back there. Two down. One, I don't have your track. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Yo, yo, okay, Beast okay. Beastin' Havoc. He went court, he went court. Yo, we need to start spawning Beast and E, bro. This kill, all these kills are gonna be useless until we start spawning in there. Yeah, I'm from my, I'm from hitting water. They could be water street. Backseat, backseat. Feral, 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 we gotta work top. We should work top together. Nice. I'm be awakening. I'm gonna try to go top. Actually, dead. Nice. Nice. Just walking off track. 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 Walking off
I want mid. I'm on I'm on I'm on yeah, I'm on 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 I'm down 25, but now at least you got the position you want, but a bit chaotic for a moment there. Well, and I love what I heard from Simp. It's like, we we have to start spawning at BS and D or all of these kills are going to be useless. And what happens when you're spawning around this area where they're at right now is you can put pressure at C and you try to flip the spawns A, and that's exactly what they did. They have to execute on the, the kills at C, or what happens, you end up in a three cap, and which still could happen, but they were able to do so. They were able to get out of that trap. Now can they get B back? They should be able to, it's based on the minimap. They've got a chance to at least get the neutral, maybe the cap, but pushing in from that bottom side of the map will be Mutineers. It's so close to getting capped and they stop it. Skies is going on a tear as he picks up a triple around that B site. Major Maniac tries to answer with a double of his own, but now the pressure through to see it's Feral. And, and this is what I was in. talking about, right? You, you push through BSD like Florida has. You see that Atlanta spawns towards A, and now they have to get these kills towards C. They're able to do so. They're going to flip the script very quickly. So a good job done by Atlanta. A better job done by Florida to quickly respond. They're up just over 30 now. As six arrows set up around mid-map at B. The Vi for control. Frosty still tucked away in the steps. Is able to take down Simp. In a good position to look over B. But this is going to be a very, very healthy lead. Four Mutineers going into the second half. The one good thing for FaZe is you'll be spawning on the stronger side, but now your risk of a three cap. Things could get very ugly. It's five in a row now for Pharaoh. Three in a row for Awakening. Everybody lighting it up. Just look at the staff on the side of the Mutineers. They are having their way with FaZe Clan right now. This has been sensational stuff from them. And again, it's it's pretty thin of easy. And respawns at times just... uh. Not playing too well. Like, a priest has just had a, a rough series overall, individually, and he's had some rough moments this weekend. Trying to get B to reduce this, but what, 46 points well, could go up to 50 by the time this is done. And I, I, it's, I think a, our, it's a rough one. I think our argument for teams like FaZe is that you can, you can sort of get past the dud because you have most, more, so much strength in your team, but there's mm. a difference between a rough map and a 3 and 15. Like, that, that, that is just... I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know but what's I, I going on. But he is they, they set it up. I, I mean, a, anytime like there was that moment that FaZe could have broke through, they could have had CB, and Florida instantly flips it. They get C back. Like they, There could have been a point where this leads only maybe 10 points for Florida, and you feel yeah. really good if you're FaZe going into it. But they're able to regain control. Then they put them into the trap. A beautiful half. That is why they are 7-1 on this map. Yeah, and uh, we you know we talk a lot about FaZe living in the chaos, but there was Mutineers. Like, when it got scrappy, when they needed to flip, like you said, they were able to do it. Just really, really strong stuff out of the Mutineers. They put up 107 points in the first half, up 51. Now, FaZe have had some crazy ones. They was against Subliners where they had that, what was it, like a 50-point comeback where they had nearly a 70-point swing in a dom. Like, they've, they've done some nutty stuff like that, but, man... It is not going to be easy. At least you have the Seaside's control, but as I say that, it's Havoc sneaking through. It does a BZ, right? I mean, you would imagine with the Celium and a BZ, the way they, where they just spawned, yeah, you, you have to recognize someone snuck through. Major Maniac, he's going to be the man on top of it as they try to get back to it. Priest, uh, he's on the other side of the map. There are so many skirmishes going down on each flag. This could uh, result in the game right here if Baze, they don't win it. And they didn't. Pharaoh, Frosty, were able to win both those gunfights. Yeah, because it's more than needing a two cap right now, right? You need a yeah, two need cap, a, a neutral, a three cap at some point. Like, you need a lot and of it's help. It's possible, but it's got to happen quick. Yeah, still four minutes to go, but. And you, and you see what happens when they play so aggressive, there's openings, right? You, you have to play so quick. Guess who sneaks through? It's Pharaoh, neutral C. I love that play. Play your lead. Play the clock. You're out of there. Your teammates are still doing a great job at B. They find three kills, and now it's two and a neutral for Florida. Yeah, yeah. When I said two and a neutral, I meant base need that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with Mutineers having it, this lead is just going to grow more and more. This is an old-fashioned stomping. 
As FaZe have been That's throttled in this map seven. three. Woo! That is impressive. Impressive stuff for the Florida Mutineers. Just look at that stat line. Skies and... I mean, we, we know what kind of a talent he is, and he has maps like this from time to time, and I think it's why we started to believe in Mutineers early, is just because of the gun skill, because of the talent you had, and then sometimes they trick us, and they have poor events, and we get confused on how good they actually are. Well, here's the, the swift reminder that they can well, you play and I with have the had this discussion. Like, you, you would just take their core. Like, you know Skies can be a superstar. You know yeah. Pharaoh can be a superstar. You know that Frosty has the ability to do so. We're not even sure if we've seen the best of Frosty yet. And then you, you have a, a solid surge player and really what's turned into a leader in Havoc. You add a, a young talent in Awakening and you're starting to see what, what happens. Can they get the results more consistent and can they close out this final? Because they might be done with the map three, but they're not done with this series yet. Not a whole lot left to highlight in this map. But they were up 50 in the first half, now up 70. Faze have been beaded, battered, and world star by the Mutineers. Now you have a two and a neutral, but it's just going to be too late for Faze. You needed this two minutes ago. Or maybe to open the half. Yeah, maybe six minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a long time ago. Now it really just comes down to whether or not FaZe can continue that that kind of 50-50 win rate in Hardpoint. I mean, they haven't been good in Hardpoint by any stretch of the imagination, but when they've needed to pull one out, when they've needed to go big, they've been able to win that map four and clutch up. They're going to have to do it here once again, which is going to be difficult because we're going to be heading to the Mutineers Hardpoint pick, right, as you said? Yeah, it's just it's Hackney Yard, right? It's a strong map for FaZe. I don't think they have many weak maps. We saw them just... Uh, who, who they just played against against gorillas in, in the semifinal, which got you know them to a map five. So you know it's one that they have a fresh repetition on. Familiar territory for sure, since it's so recent. But that was one, if I remember correctly, that Priesta that that was probably his best game was on Hackney Hardpoint this entire weekend. So we'll we'll see if he can turn around. I I know we put a lot of spotlight on him in his performance, but he's gonna have to turn around there. He's picked it up a bit after the, what was it, 3 and 14, 3 and 15. I mean, it reminds me of the map one. Like, he starts triple, quadruple negative, and then from there plays even. Uh, it's just the starts. The starts have been so, so tough for him. Hey, it's not just him. Maybe, uh, uh, right uh, it's there with ridiculous him. from Skies, because we don't really, we don't typically see those sort of numbers with the main AR. What we see a lot of the times main AR is a lot of defense towards that C flag is Havish just having some fun now with the knife. But usually your main AR has like your lowest engagements on this map because the way you have to play it on the train tracks. But 2711 is just a ridiculous stat line from Skies. Well, if I remember correctly, isn't this where Mox and Skies would flip? Like on dominations when they'd switch roles. Yeah. And now, I mean, maybe if you're Skies, you don't have to do that, right? You get to stay in your comfort role. Because I, I would imagine with Mox's struggles, that was probably something that he preferred. I, at least I would think so. Now with the change in the, the team, if you're Skies, you're able to keep the AR in your hand. And maybe that's helped them even more in the domination. I don't know. It could be. Maybe it was just the role, because I specifically remember it to this map, and that's what I was talking about, where that man AR really had to play, like, basically base defense at times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was Mox. Well, but I here's the thing. For, <laughs> for Atlanta, you, you've been in this position all weekend, haven't you? Uh, so can, can they do it again? They're going to have to try and do it one more time if they're going to get us to a map five, but that, for the most part, has been the driving force behind this weekend. It has been the single biggest standout is the sheer number of map fives. What we're talking, I said, what, eight out of 12? Yeah. So 66% yeah. of our maps have and been- And we've talked about just like how close the COD League has gotten. These last couple of home series have produced some of the best Call of Duty that we've watched. And yeah. it's like, okay, when is it gonna stop? Because it continues to get better, right? Like. Uh, in the past, we've had a few teams that were just dominant and you've expected them to see in the final and that's what we saw. And then it was just a battle between those two Titans. But right now, with these 12 teams, anything is happening.
Well, that's why, like, I, I know there were some frustrations with maybe the change in the format of uh, verse years past. And obviously, we're, we're in a position where we need to be online, which I know is frustrating for all. Trust me, I want to get back to live events as soon as we yeah, can please. as well. But, <laughs> but I do find myself still just with the level of competition and these kind of bi-weekly tournaments that we've had, I, I can't wait for champs. Like, it's getting me so hyped because you just don't know week in and week out. Like, I was someone tweeting me, they're like, if with how Gorillas played... And if Florida win this event, how the hell are you gonna do your power rankings? And I was like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. Like, it, you look at them at like a yearly basis, I guess. Yeah, how do I, which typically we don't do. Usually, there's a lot of recency in it. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, it's gonna be very, very tough to do. Uh, power rankings are gonna be a mess depending on how this final ends. I mean, even even at phase win, I mean, maybe that makes it a little bit easier for the ranking side of things. But yeah, mutant ears take it. God knows where how we're gonna place people in their spots, but. Mutineers just one map away now from being what one of four teams that have won two home series events. Uh, it's just wild at the top, absolutely wild. And what a crazy year it has been for the Mutineers. And props to you know what Ogre too, their GM and the, the players on this squad. That with all the insane circumstances you've had, because the Pristini situation was obviously an odd one, and we still don't know exactly what went down, but I know he steps aside for personal issues right after you get to your first final. Mm -hmm. And then it seems like, seems like you're going to be in a world of trouble once you lose him, but then you pick up Pharaoh and you're able to get to another final. And now Mox has been struggling. You make another change, but he's seemingly with awakening slots right in. Like it's been a roller coaster and maybe that's part of the reason that the, the results have been inconsistent, but fact is it's three final bursts, maybe a second one here. Uh, they are, they are a top team for sure. Yeah, it's impressive. It's straight up just impressive. A lot, of, a lot of love to their to their staff, Atura over too. It, it just again, it, it comes down to the system that they've built. It, it works in Modern Warfare, and and that's it. And now this stretch is crazy, right? Like uh, I think because of the delay with everything that was going on, like it, it ends up being we have something like four events in five weeks or four events in six weeks. Like it's crazy. Like we're gonna have our Paris Legion home series right around the corner. And Florida Mutineers will be playing right in that. So welcome Paris Legion to your home series event. You might be playing the champs from the last event is that'll be tough, but you can see it's pretty stacked across the board. Sublight has been playing well. Optic have improved. Phase in a New grand York, final right now. London. Yeah, they, no, this is like another, <laughs> another really, really stacked event. Um, I can't, I can't wait for that one. I mean, every, every weekend, man, but I think we're ready to go. It's time to get into the hard point. The question, can FaZe push this to a map five? Can they do it again? Can they come from behind and somehow get a series victory? It has been their recipe for success all weekend long. They got one more shot at it. Yeah, one more shot. And again, just looking at the records, five and two for Florida, four and two for Atlanta. One of those wins coming today against the Gorillas. So. See if they can step up. And if you're watching some players, I'm looking at Abizi and Priesta. How do they perform when their backs are up against the wall? Here we go. Yeah, you said it was Pristini's kind of best map maybe this weekend. Can he do it? But we're going to start off on Simp's POV. Now, the good thing, you've got the strong spawn if you are phase. He's looked to maintain that side. I think it was Pharaoh that was going to be trying to lurk through, but he's not going to be able to do it. Into the hard point, go. Atlanta phase. Right into the forefront of things was a BZ. He's finally going to drop, but quickly with the answer will be Major Maniac with two now in his back pocket. It'll be him and Simp, him and Simp kind of holding the cross as Frosty soars on in. Yeah, just some insane movement from Frosty, some insane movement from Celium. He's able to find a double. Some nice early time, and, and you said it. Typically, what you want to see if you're you are starting on the left side of your mini map is a lot of early time, and maybe Florida can do that now. Is Atlanta going to want to play a little bit more conservative as they get set up for tire shop? And well, what we've basically deemed at times the unbreakable. Can well, they break through? Yeah, that is the question. Mutineers have a frustrating 60 seconds ahead of them, or do they? Let's go straight okay. to an Astro Gaming listen-in with the Mutineers. Nice steps now. One steps. 
I'm nading P1, I'm hard nading. Push him further. I'm nading, I'm dead. Fuck I'm dead. I'm dead. I have a trophy outside with him. Get time, get time, get time. You guys have to get time. Go to Yeah, go to him. Everybody come back, everybody come back down. Yeah, we go. I'm getting middle, I need your middle. Yeah, all that time. Okay, they're gonna meet top first. Yo, middle arc, top first. You can't go up. Two bottom tires, there's like four bottom tires, bro. One more to your left. One shot, one shot, low hill. Body goes back. Two low hill, two low hill. I'm getting out, you gotta get that down. Back window, window now. No, 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 Play, yeah. play this guy. Did someone get initial with Trevor? I am trying to go. Cross the green immediately. Cross the green. green. Yo, no, 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 Play like a pretty in green. Fork, fork dead, fork dead. No P1 door. No, one's in green already. One cross green already. Yeah, I'm going to sell that. Oh, we have to see him. Yeah, I'm really busy. Really busy. Yeah, I'm busy. 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 I'm Yo, two green, two green, green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Mutineers, they do a good job of the opening transition to Tire Shop. It's not nearly the lead you might have expected FaZe to have. What worked for the Mutineers there, Joe? Uh, just was their, their push right off the, the start. I think we were on board with Awakening, and he found two or three, and they put enough presence on the hill. They got so many kills in a row that they got those spawns near that parking lot, and they win another fight. I, I, I will say, though, Atlanta did a, a good job fighting back, not giving up all the time, but a big break, uh, a win, a small win for Florida. And I think the last I saw the scoreboard up, it was Simp this time Simp starting slow. Eight, yeah. yeah, it's just feels like somebody, somebody for FaZe just can't get going out the gate, and as much as they're struggling, it's prop to the Mutineers on starting hot. Skies wins another gunfight. As you can see, the fight's happening top side and bottom floor as well. Gotta love the picture and picture. Gonna show you both sides of this hard point. What can Pharaoh now do? A little slide cancel across. You, you kind of saw there, like, the change now with Merc Foregrip gone. Like, that that hip fire there is such it's such a faster kill, right, with, with Merc Foregrip. A little, little bit different now. You've seen the change all weekend. Yeah, you're hardly seeing any any hip fire kills. <laughs> and there were some... some Ones that were were pretty bonkers in, in events in the past, but Florida are gonna break through as we take a look at our scoreboard. Yeah, Sim, four and thirteen, starting to turn things around now. A solid life, a good thing for them. Major Maniac, Celium, Abizi, all playing well. They're still in this one. They have the spawns for Docs as we're gonna rotate over towards that left side of the map. Celium fighting for the rest of the scrap time. And, and one thing I noticed early on was. Uh, Florida was running a 2 AR setup, and that can punish your subs, guys like Priesta, guys like Sim, because you're just running into M Force. Well, that that was the thing that Rocker did that really kind of hurt FaZe at the beginning of the year, right? When they were first struggling, when it first seemed like somebody kind of slowed the game down, they struggled with it. That's exactly what it was. See, so Mutineers can keep it rolling, but a chance for a lead change now if FaZe can't continue to hold. But the problem is they've got Pharaoh in their second story. Sim comes in for the knife. And Pharaoh puts him in the dirt. Pharaoh keeps on rolling. 21 and 12. Four in a row for Pharaoh. The break is in for the Mutineers. And Pharaoh from the top was doing him dirty. Just reminds you of Gunrunner. They hit early setups. They're not executing your first set of kills. Awakening did it on the second hill. This time it was Pharaoh who goes on a spree. They have to find those openers. They are simply just not. It's going to be a 60 point lead as we reset now and go back to our first hill inside a warehouse. So, so good for Mutineers and the hard point struggles continue for FaZe. Can they do it better this time? I mean, you need to Got get some time inside and hold down Tire Shop. It cannot be as scrappy as last time around. As, that, as you say, they've got to. It is five down. The clean sweep for Mutineers, the only silver lining. You're still on that side of the map if you're FaZe, but they're going to get a ton of time now on this hard point. They are, and you see Pharaoh goes back to that M4. It feels like just it's hill dependent when he wants to run that second one. Three do come in. 30 seconds, though, earned by the Mutineers. Puts them up to 150. Major Maniac with a big play. They're able to connect with the nade. Able to stay alive. Sims there now to help them, but they aren't ready for Frosty, who's there for the cleanup. Just trying to fight for this scrap time. How can they hold on to Tire Shop? Tire Shop, a good hold here. We'll, you know, bring them within 10. And now, 100 points away from awakening, awakening at his first pro event, going through Huntsman, going through Empire, and going through FaZe to get his first ever That's tournament insane. victory. <laughs> Just wild, wild stuff. As the storylines for these young players continue to grow. But they're not out of the woods yet. 
as you mentioned, a decent hold here, or a strong hold here, and they're right back into the game, but Havoc trying to play the disruption yet again on the pinch. It's going to be Awakening trying to collapse on through. Havoc's able to take two down. Awakening gets one on the other side of things. And he's now gotten spawns. into the hard point. They're at least Blue disrupting spawns. some of the they time spawning again, out Clint. his phase. It can't happen, Clint. And that time after time, mutineers break. Phase can't hold. And I, I still can't decide. I guess if it was just this series, I'd say it's all mutineers. But it's been a trend for phase all weekend long. It is sloppy. They've got to go back to the drawing board and hard point because it is just mistake after mistake. It, it, you want to know what it is. What they do such a good job of is playing their life. They don't play around the objective. When I talk about the mutineers, we were on board with Awakening. He was playing his life. Then it was Havoc. He was playing his life just playing for spawn kills. Because what that does when you stay alive, that causes the opposing team to panic. They can't get your cuts middle of the map. That buys you time for your reinforcements to push up. And you need your reinforcements to break that hill. You need numbers. You need four to five guys in that area. And they have done it twice now. They did it at docks. You <laughs> see the, the kill feed. feed. They are doing it again here. Florida Mutineers are just simply on point. How many was that in a row? It's still going. And where's the last time? There we go. Be easy. Thank you. Somebody from FaZe got a kill. That stretch was absurd. It had to be 10 to 12 straight for Mutineers still. Up 75, 45 away from their second home series win. FaZe, you've had a lot of series comebacks. You've showed a lot of guts in coming back in these series. Can you do it one more time? And this map has provided some of the more insane comebacks. You've seen Empire do it. You've seen Rocker do it. You've seen so many of these scenarios. But is the lead simply too big? Now, as you get inside of office, somehow if you're FaZe, you have to hold down office. And you've got to rally that right into docks. But Mutineers, they just cannot let it happen. Darrow now over the 30 point mark. Look at the effort out of just basically everybody from the Mutineers. Just Isilda. stellar stuff. Isildo is keeping phase in it. They're still alive. And it feels like this is one of like those hills where, you know, maybe Florida's not getting a ton of pressure because they really are trying to put emphasis on this Dox Hill. Well, better hold, close the game better out. hold. Yeah, exactly. Do they hold? That is the question. Havoc's going on uh -oh. a wide flank, and I think he spawns them out. Oh, no. Havoc, because he goes on the wide flank, his teammates die. The phase flip is in. The, the flank is fine if your players don't die. It's just the worst of two die, things. Right? The, the communication has to be on point there to line that up correctly. They did it on the first rotation. Can they do it on the second? Three going to go down. That's going to apply some forward pressure. Pharaoh just staying oh, alive, trying to get no. some spawn kills. But here oh, comes Awakening. No. Here comes Havoc. The push is in. Can they break him again inside of docks? They did it so easily last time around. Now the parallel spawns are in. And it is just a swarm in and around the point. That 75-point lead has evaporated. Now down 11 is phases. They've gotten set up into the hard point, but there's still bodies there from Mutineers. What seems like it is going to be our first lead change in forever. Now coming through phase. Go out in front with 20 seconds remaining on the hard point. Now Mutineers look to get this scrap time and all the focus is going to be on next. As we get into our third set of rotations, we'll look towards the map. Who's going to have the spawns? Who's got the spawns for Tire Shop or do we even get there? Do we even get there? And Skies is playing his life so well, but FaZe isn't going to worry about him right now. You have to focus the hill. It's Celium. It's Simp inside. Priest is going to be there. It's a three-man stack right now from FaZe. Can they hold on? They can win it here. Well, both teams can, and that's four dead. Major Maniac, he's going to win the main AR battle at Tire Shop. They have spawns uh, if we go the distance. And two of them spawn top Tire Shop. I don't know if Skies was ready for that, so two FaZe members going to be there. They've got Tire Shop control. They're, all They're in. set up in position Florida's to take it, but Mutineers can still win it. You can't even think about the spawns for next. You've got to close it out here if you're Mutineers. You've got to do it. 13 points now away from victory. If they look to hold off the phase onslaught, you set it perfectly. They are all in now, and they can do it. They've gotten the kills. Simp is going to be the last person here. He's got to try and disrupt. They just need a couple more ticks. Can phase contest? They've gotten in for now, but there's the clearance from the Mutineers, and there's the win. They they hold off the late surge from FaZe, and they will get their second home series win. What a map it was. Woo!
That was a fun one. It was all Florida early on. And you know what? Sometimes they just do not go away. And they didn't. It was a big office hold. It was a big docs hold to keep them in the game. And yes, phase, they did it. They were able to fight for tire shop if we went there. And that was it. It was if we went there. But guess what? We didn't. They're able to hold on. It's 37 from Frosty. It's 38 from Pharaoh. Woo! Everybody felt like they were just taking over at some point for Florida. And hey, one more time, your Minnesota home series winners, Florida Mutineers. They get their second, and I cannot gas up Awakening Ooh. more. You come in, your first event, your first event as a pro, and you go through the top three teams in the game to get a win. If you're worried about the pressure of the final being too much, it's not as much credit as you can give to him and the core of this Mutineers team, but what a win it was. And I mean, props to FaZe. They were down 75 <laughs> and they got a lead there at Docs to have a chance to do it. They almost had one more miracle up your sleeve, but it's like, how many times can you do it if you're FaZe? It's like you pulled a rabbit out of the hat, what feels like five times this event. You couldn't have one more Mutineers clutch up when it matters most. And that's an incredible win for them, Joe. Woo. Yeah, we're gonna take a look at our scuff play of the game, and it's just gonna be the, the last, you know, chaotic seconds into it. As I said it, they had to go for it. They knew they had to go for it. They just flood bottom L. They flood top L, and well, it's Awakening, it's Frosty, it's Havoc. They all win their individual one-on-one. -on -one. Simp has to go. The staggered push out of phase is there, but it is not enough in Florida. They win in four. It's just crazy. I mean, I, I don't think any of us thought it was impossible for Mutineers to win. We know. We know how up and down they've been. We know they've been in many finals. But when we chalk this one up on the board, we talked about this event, the biggest storyline. Yes, part of it was that every home series winner was here. And Mutineers were part of that. But then also it was the big three with, with, with FaZe, Empire, and Huntsman. Huntsman coming off a win. FaZe coming off a win. Empire coming off a win. Like, you really, really thought there was going to be maybe some separation there, but Mutineers, like, slow down. Slow down! We want to be added to the conversation. Now four teams with two wins, and man, they look uh, they look good doing it, especially in the hard points. So, so solid top to bottom. I, I mean, there's just like, you know, you, you, there's some, you know, tournaments when you know, you may not play uh, one of the best teams in the world into the final or semifinal, but you talk about beating Chicago day one, beating Dallas today, beating Atlanta today like there, there is no question about it that these guys are the real deal no it's it's insane and that's why like I still don't know with power rankings like what I would do for them right now because it's it's tough to vault them necessarily into the the top spot but like you can make the argument since they went yeah, through all true, three of those teams yeah, at this might event. Have to. um it's just crazy to think about because they they go through they go through everybody is what's so wild about it. I mean, Mutineers, props to you. And I'm sure the, the Florida Mutineers fans are going crazy right now is you, you picked a great event to, to show up and play some of your best Call of Duty because this might be the most competitive one we've had yet. And man, that was uh, a thrilling, thrilling performance. But I'll tell you what, the more the more I commentate this game, the more I watch it. Skies is becoming one of my favorite players to watch. Like he is just unbelievable, and I know they they're filled with talent. Yeah. But Skies is Skies is something special, man. It feels like he very much realizes where he needs to be on the map. I think similar to to Slasher because when we've watched Slasher, you know these last couple of home series, he he's definitely felt a step ahead with the M4. But I don't think Skies was there. Um, so yeah, Skies is definitely up there for me. Yeah, he's been nuts. And if you're asking yourself, what is all this for? It is for champs. August. Champs is everything. There's so much money on the line. All of the seeding, all of the points, everything leads into this. And, you know, there's been some changes with everything that's gone on with COVID, how the structure is going to work. Uh, you know, at first it was what just going to be the top eight teams getting in. Now all 12 teams are going to be there. Some teams will be starting in the losers bracket, but you know, if you're improving late, like if you're a Gorillas team and you're improving late, like there is still some upsets that can happen, some madness that can occur, and some cash that can be made. Uh, I cannot wait, man. Like, so much money on the line. Yeah, you see that. First place, two million Ooh. buckaroos. Got four events left. We'll uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we're hitting uh, the final stretch, right? The final stretch to get towards champs. But congratulations to the Florida Mutineers, your Minnesota home series victors. We've got LVP with Frosty coming out of the break.